Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to serve an HTML file from the SP32 SPIFS file system using the Arduino IDE. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Firebeetle board from the F-Robot. So before we get started, we are going to make use of the Arduino IDE plugin that allows us to upload files from our computer to the SP32 file system. If you haven't already installed this plugin, uh, you should do it before we proceed. I'm going to be leaving the, the link to the GitHub page of this tool and also a link to a video where I explained in more detail how to get started using this plugin. So, assuming that you have already installed this plugin, you should have here under the tools menu of your Arduino EDA, you should have this option here, ASP32 Sketch Data Upload, that will allow you to upload data from a folder uh, contained in the, within your Sketch folder. You should be able to upload the content, the files from that folder to your ASP32 uh, file system. So you should save the file in a, in a directory of your choice um, in your computer and you, sh you should navigate to this sketch folder. Alternatively, an easier way to get to this sketch folder is just going here to this sketch menu and select show sketch uh, data folder. So here, what we need to do is creating a new folder. So basically, at this point, we are locating in the Arduino sketch folder, the one that we are going to be developing and we are going to check the code in a while, but basically, the first thing we need to do is creating here a folder. And this folder should be called data, exactly as I'm showing you here, because this is how the plugin will identify the files to upload to the file system. So inside this, this folder, it is where we should create our, our files, or we should place our files that we will later upload to the ASP32. So in our case, we are going to create an HTML file. I'm going to be using here I'm going to be using uh, Notepad++. So basically, I'm opening it here. And the content of this file will be something very simple because I don't want to focus here on writing uh, HTML code. So it, this is just a proof of concept of what we can do. So you can serve whatever HTML you want. But basically, we are just going to write here a paragraph and an hello world message just for illustration uh, purposes. OK. hello message from Spiff's file system, something very simple, you can write wherever you, wha you want, and then we are just closing here our paragraph, and that's it. So I'm going to be saving this as an HTML file, So, and the name of this file, the name that we are going to assign to this file, should be the one that we are going to use uh, in our Arduino codes in order to read the file from the Spiff's file system. So I'm going to call this test underscore file and this file should be saved as HTML. Let me just find it here. OK, HTML. As you can see here, the full file name and the extension is test underscore file dot HTML. So I'm going to save it here. As you can see it already, because not plus, uh, not met plus plus um, has this syntax highlighting feature. So as you can see here, the, the paragraph text from HTML get highlighted. So let me just get rid of this here. And as you can see here, uh, by default, this, my, my browser will interpret this file as an HTML file, and if I double-click it, it will open here and render the HTML and show the message that we defined as a paragraph. So, so far, this HTML file seems to be working fine, and we are just opening it locally. Now the next step will be serving it from our uh, ASP32. So I'm going to close this, and now to serve this uh, to, to upload this file to the ASP32 file system, we simply can close here this data folder because we don't need it anymore. And we just go here to the tools, ASP32 sketch data upload, we click it and the upload should begin. This takes a while, as we have covered in the previous tutorial, but now it is doing the procedure, it is uploading the file and it should at the end indicate here a message, okay. As you can see here, it indicates hard resetting via uh, RTS pin, and we have here the information that the image was uploaded to the SPIF file system. So from this point onwards, uh, the HTML file should already be on our file system. So we can look into the actual 
Arduino code, the code that we want to run on the SP32 in order to serve this file. Uh, before we get started, uh, let me just say that we are going to also be using this SP Async Web Server library, which is a library that allows us to set up a, a Sync Web Server, a HTTP Web Server on the SP32. I've already covered it also uh, in previous tutorials, and now we are going to use one of its features that allows to serve content from the file system. But we'll get there in a minute. So, uh, as usually, the first thing we do is including the libraries. We need the Wi-Fi.h in order to be able to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network. We'll be needing this spiffs.h library, which will take care of the procedure relating uh, with accessing the file in the spiffs file system. And as I've already said, we are going to include this ASP async web server .h library, which pretty much allows us to set up an HTTP web server in our ASP32. Naturally, we will need the credentials of the Wi-Fi network to which we are going to connect, uh, in particular the network name or SSID from service set identifier and the password. Obviously, you should change here this placeholder that I have by the actual credentials of your Wi-Fi network. We also need an object of this class, a sync web server, which will be the class that we will be using in order to configure uh, our sync uh, web server. So when the constructor of this class receives as input the port where the server will be listening to incoming requests. In our case, we are going to be use port 80, which is the default HTTP port. Okay, moving on to the setup. And basically, since this is an asynchronous solution, we don't need to pull anything in the loop. So the rest of the code will be written in the setup and the server will handle uh, the, routes, the route requests asynchronously. It will trigger uh, an handling function to handle these requests. So basically, we just need to configure the server and write all the code in our setup. And since we don't have anything to do here in the main loop, it can be left empty. So the first thing we do in our setup uh, is opening a serial connection so we can output some results from our program. In particular, uh, we are going to, to print the IP address assigned to the SP32 so we can later connect to it, but we'll get there in a minute. So basically opening the serial connection and then mounting the SPIFS file system because as we have already covered, the first thing we need to do before interacting with the SPIFS file system is mounting it. If we cannot mount it, uh, there's no point in trying to interact with it because we will, we will not be able to do it. So after mounting the SPIFS file system, we are going to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network uh, using the credentials that we have declared before here in the begin method of our Wi-Fi external variable and then we will wait for the connection to be established and finally what we are going to do is printing the local IP assigned to the SP32 on the network. We are going to need this, uh, this IP in order to reach the server from a client and in our case we are going to be using a web browser as our client. Then the only thing that we need to do is declaring uh, the routes of our server, so the routes that the client can reach and we are going on with web one route and that route will be responsible for serving uh, the, the HTML file. So we just need to call this on method on our server object in order to bind the route to an handling function, an handling function that will be um, executed whenever a request is done to this route and basically we do it by configure we configure it by calling this method and passing the inputs needed. So the first input is the name of the route. We are going to call it slash HTML because we are going to be serving an HTML file and we are not worrying here too much about how to properly design an API. This is just a proof of concept so calling the route HTML is just fine. And then here we'll pass this value in order to say that basically our route will only listen to HTTP GET requests because basically the client will only get the HTML, will not be able to do any other operations. So HTTP GET is the adequate method uh, to bind to our route. Finally, as third input, we need to pass here uh, a function. In this case, we are using C++ Lambda syntax. Uh, this will be the handling function that will be executed when the request is made to this route. So as we have covered in previous tutorials, we will have access to this, uh, to a pointer to an object of this class, a sync web server request, which pretty much allows us to uh, get an answer back to the client. So if we focus our attention now in the implementation of the uh, callback function, uh, what we are going to basically do is using this send method 
of our async web server request object and basically this send method is what allows us to get uh, to return an answer back to the client. Basically this send method is overloaded with many versions so there are multiple use cases we want to get back to the client a string, a file, uh, something for us from a stream etc. There are a lot of uh, overload uh, signatures for this method and we are going to use a particular one that allows us uh, to specify a file and to serve that file. So basically, in this version of the send method, the first thing it receives uh, is basically an object that extends the class fs, which is, uh, um, which is a class that represents a file system because the SV32 supports other file systems other than um, spiffs. But basically, this spiffs object, uh, this external variable that becomes available when we include the spiffs.h library, so the class uh, for this variable actually uh, inherits from file system, so basically uh, we can use it here as argument of the send method. So we pass this object and this object will be used under the hood by the async web server libraries in order to manage uh, getting the file, serving the file, etc. All of this will be handled under the hood so we don't need to worry about reading the actual file explicitly, reading the bytes, passing it uh, to some to some function, all of this will be handled under the hood by this send method. So, as I was saying, we pass this spiffs uh, object and then as second argument we need to pass a string uh, basically with the path of the file that we want to serve. As we've seen before, we are serving a file uh, called test underscore file dot html and since we created that file uh, directly in the in the data folder, so this means that when the file gets uploaded to the spiffs file system, it will be in the root of the spiffs of the spiffs file system. So basically, the second argument is the path to our file, and the third and last argument should be the content type, so the the client knows how to interpret the content that we are sending to to the client. So because in this particular case we are sending an HTML file, so our content files so our content type should be text slash HTML. Obviously, we could be serving here other type of files such as an image or JavaScript or CSS or even a plain text file. So, but this we need to explicitly say uh, here to the framework so the framework knows what uh, to return to the client in the content type header. So, this is it in what regards to setting uh, the route handling function. And other than that, we are only left. Uh, to call this begin method on the server object in order for the server to start listening to incoming requests. And that, after that, all of the rest of the procedure is asynchronous. Uh, this is why the, the, um, this framework is called uh, a synchronous HTTP web server, uh, because precisely because in the main loop function we don't need to be polling any object for incoming clients. Everything will be handled uh, under the hood for us, which is very practical. So, and that's it in what regards to the code. Now I'm going to be opening here uh, the serial monitor. Okay, I've already previously uploaded the code to my SP32. So basically, uh, I'm just rerunning it again. And as you can see here, uh, it first tries to connect to the Wi-Fi network. And if it succeeds, it will print to us uh, the local IP address assigned to the SP32. So after that, simply copy this IP address and open here um, your uh, web browser of your choice. I'm using Google Chrome and just type here HTTP, sorry, column slash slash and the IP of the, your ASP32, which will basically allow the client to reach the server. Since we are using the default HTTP port, we don't need to explicitly put here colon 80 because basically when we are using the default HTTP port, uh, the browser doesn't need this information. By default, it will send the request to port 80. And then we put here a slash and we write the route of our server. Recall that we have configured an HTML route which is the one that we should specify here. And if we hit enter, as you can see here, we can read this hello message from Spiff's file system, which was precisely the one we have defined in our HTML file than, than that we tested locally. And as you can see, we get exactly the same result. So this is it, as you can see, um, if we make use of the Arduino EDA plugin, we have a lot of flexibility 
uh, in what regards to the files that we want to upload. This was a very simple example because I did not want to focus on the actual HTML file, but obviously you can um, use this plugin to upload a more complex web page with some more content as long as you don't exceed the maximum size of your file system so you can uh, write a more complex web, web page and surf it you can actually write web pages that depend for example uh, in bootstrap it's possible to upload bootstrap uh, to the sp32 it fits the file system and um, and you can then write a web page for example that makes use of this front end framework and uh, this gives a lot of flexibility to what you can do in such a tiny device uh, such as the sp32 so that's it, it's very simple and uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this tutorial, uh, hope you have enjoyed.